Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and the Smoky Mountain Relic Room, and we are with Tyree Lamp. We are out in the middle, where are we, dude? There's, there, I, we, where are we? This, this is, is the Bonanza, Utah area. Um, There's a Bonanza going on. Bonanza. Yeah. <laughs> so what this is, is the old remnants of Lake Uwinna. Okay. Uh, 20 plus million years ago, this was an old lake bed. This was the shoreline of the lake and it would move back and forth and on that shoreline, fossils would be laid down. So how big of a lake are we talking about? Oh, this lake was 20 miles long, 15 miles wide, I believe, if I'm wow. not mistaken. So a massive, it was a big massive lake. It changed lake. a lot. Over about 25, 30 million years, it changed. There was a three lake system. There was Lake Uinta, Lake Goshute, and Fossil Lake. Fossil Lake's the famous one that all the fish from Kemmer come from. Yeah. We've done episodes up there before. Yep. So this is roughly the same time period? Same time period. So this is the same time period. What's going on in this period of time? Well, during this period of time, it was warmer climate. We were different. We were a little bit different latitude and longitude than we are now. Different plants grew. This was more, a little bit more tropical type, uh, like you see down Mississippi type area right now. There's a lot of early mammals going on in this time period too. You know, this is you know, right after the dinosaurs took a nosedive with a comet and you get us mammals start showing up and doing their thing, you know? And there's a lot of species that, you know, that were around then that aren't, aren't around anymore. What are some of the crazier species? The neatest one that I've seen come out of this area out here is called a Uintotherium. Uintotherium. It's a moose rhino with tusks. <laughs> Is the best way. Look it up. It's just. It's, oh, it, it, <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff that was around in the Eocene, and we're in the of, Eocene, right? Yes. Yeah. That, that, a lot of things that were being tried out, and as evolution evolved, they didn't work out. <laughs> things were better than that. They no longer had rhinos with big tusks, and they didn't work out very well. Stuff without tusks took over. <laughs> there, 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 there also is a, is a species of elephant a little later, but the tusks were on his chin on and went down. I think Dino Theorem, I Might think. Might have been. No, I it, can't it, but it, uh, chin tusks. Is yeah. it, what, what's the purpose of that? You know, if, if you don't know what it is, it's mating. Yeah, it's it, always, drove, it drove the girls crazy. That's, that's right. Exactly yeah, chin right. tusks drove the girls crazy. <laughs> so, but there are also a lot of species here, especially the plant life, the yes. things that we would recognize today. Yeah, yeah that's um, where we're at here is a shallow shoreline mangrove swamp type area. Okay. And so we're digging through the clays, the little bit of sediment that would come out and bury up leaves, insects, things like that out here. And they fossilize it, preserved it very well. Okay. So what kind, so how, how are we excavating this? What's, because I, I guess you can look and you can see. You can see, see quarries all yeah. over out through these canyons here. Yeah. The people have been digging leaves and fossils out here since the 1800s. Um, they are extremely common. There are miles and miles of this, of this formation coming out and leaves last 24 to 48 hours before because they're carbon yeah. and they're gone. If they weather out, they are gone. So once these are exposed, they're gone. They are gone. Now, yes. what kind of property is this? This is BLM. This, this is, is BLM. Bureau, this is Bureau of Land Management. This is public property. Okay. Yeah. And the rules on public property are? In, invertebrate fossils you can collect. So leaves and things like that are okay to collect within moderation and not for resale. Right. So, and this personal is personal consumption only. Yeah. And this is a great example of, you know, gr amazing use of our, this country's natural, yeah. re, you know, resources to be yeah. able to come out and to, and to dig these fossils mm -hmm. and inspire new people, you know, to want to get out and collect. Oh yeah. I mean, this area right here, I mean, we passed a big Gilsonite mine on the way in. There's a coal mine just down the road. The road we came in uh, goes to an oil well a big oil well pad that they cut into this same formation, push these leaves out to dig, to put the oil pad down. But we're still allowed to come out here and hunt and fossil hunt and hike and explore and everything else. See, that's something that a lot of people don't realize about our public lands that you can do is, is vertebrate fossils, no. You no. absolutely cannot collect vertebrate fossils. If that's something you like to see changed, write your congressman. But what we can collect is the invertebrate stuff, the leaves, the plants, things like that. If it's yeah. a fish, you can't pick it up. If it's a Utah theorem <laughs> chin thingy. We can, yeah, we, we, yeah. we can't touch that, you yeah. know. But you know, there. How many? How many square miles is this? Oh, I have no idea. There's 50 square miles out here. I mean, just I mean, of, of the actual BLM property. I yeah. mean, oh, 
Ten, tens of thousands. And really, other than us, a few sheep herders and the oil companies, there's nobody out. In there's this nobody right out here, you know. And this is a great place to come and get lost and go find some stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. dude, let's talk about this playful piece of rock <laughs> that you. So, what we have is, you have all these layers. Every one of these layers right here would be a different event. Would be whether it be just a simple tidal, whether it was a little storm washed a bunch of sediment out and it laid that much dirt down, that much that much sediment. So as it, pull, as it lays that down, see how they peel apart? And those are all different events. They could have been a couple months apart, they could have been years apart. See, look at this guys. See how this is already naturally delaminating? These are all individual events and sediments in this in this lake. So what you have because of this is some areas have better stuff than others. Um, it had to get, a fossil gets created by being buried fairly rapidly. If it was a little bit of skiff of mud that came out, the leaf would curl up, dry up, get weathered, crabs, whatever to eat it, you wouldn't get very good fossils. If you had a storm event that laid down a couple inches all at once, it buries up the stuff and it fossilizes a lot better, not to mention it rips a lot more leaves and and, thing, and washes more things out to get buried. So a lot of these layers here you find odds and ends and pieces and the goal is to get down to the bottom right on this quarry, there's a big storm event layer. And that's what we got down to when we pop this up. So you pop one rock up and you find as many leaves as you did getting all the way down to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is where that storm event washed in all kinds of debris and stuff and deposited on this layer and it's more prominent than in these than upper in the layers. layers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's that's amazing. This the, the, this is a pr I mean look this there's stuff all over this yeah. thing. Yeah. There'll be man. a lot more as it dries. It, the layers because it's wet because we just pulled it up it doesn't want to split very well. We'll let it dry a little bit. We'll pop it again, we'll thin it down. There will be a lot more stuff in this. So, what still. species are, of plants do oh, we have? There's, here? I mean, out here is that an oak? No, that is a uh, sycamore. Sycamore. There are, I don't think there's any ginkgos on leaves. Leaves on this one. There's a willow. Uh, there's a sweet gum. There's a balloon vine. This is actually a balloon vine. It's hard to see. There's, I mean, a lot of this stuff. Is still around today. Pretty much, if you went down to Louisiana or somewhere along and North Carolina or South Carolina, somewhere in there, a lot of this stuff would still be alive today. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this: So we're, we're we've been going down, and I'm mm -hmm. sure they're curious too. We've got a lot of plates stacked here. Yeah. What's the purpose of this? Well, we're letting them dry. As they dry, they'll want to peel better on the leaves. They'll want to pop better. If you look on a lot of these leaves, they're not on the layer; they're in the mud so that leaf itself makes it want to pop yeah. so if you let it dry it'll naturally want to separate on those leaves and, and separate a lot better okay nice nice all right well yeah. let's do this let's keep digging down and we'll split in and we'll show you guys how this stuff is done all right you found a leaf oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i gotta show you what here's how troublesome this rock was <laughs> that's a broken pick that's a jill pick that's with this yeah. guy right here you there, there's bring good tools. Bring good tools is important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's try not to break this one. No, we won't do it again. So what happens a lot of times, just like on a mud flat today, you get a depression, you get a mud puddle, and you will get multiple leaves, multiple things stuck in one area. So you see where there's double here. Unfortunately, I hit it with the chisel as we went in. Oh, what'd you do that for? You know, that's it's guaranteed. Yeah, that's what will happen. Nice double leaf here. You can see a big pocket of leaves here. Unfortunately, sometimes they get too scrambled up and they're not as pretty, even though there are so many different ones here. You can see this pocket here, that's a nice double leaf as well. Two leaves stuck on top of each other. God, that's beautiful. And when we take this back, we'll finish prepping this rock off and follow them stems down. It wouldn't surprise me if they'd come off the same stick, oh, if wow. they're attached at the bottom. So just like you would with dinosaur fossils or any other kind of thing that you're digging, you can you take can it back and prep down. it down. Exactly. Yeah. But one thing I wanted everybody to watch, because we know we're the good layer, this edge didn't peel up with this. We're hoping I'm just going to pull these up live action here and we're going to see what is underneath these pieces and see if there's a good leaf or two 
That's the first time it's seen daylight in 20 million years. Nope. Or not. <laughs> but that's the way it works. Well, there's one little leaf. Yeah, there's a small leaf. Yeah, there's, there's a, a small, small one. Leaf. Let's see what we got. We aren't done yet. Yep. And there was another small one popped out. There we go. There's a little, there's a little leaf. Nice. And see, this is the difference between Chasing History and the Travel Channel, is we do not plant things. No pun intended. <laughs> this is as it is. Come thought on. it was a feather for a minute. Oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been cool. All right, well, let's keep going on. got let's pop the big plate up he's right at the bottom again oh wow that is incredible look at that oh that is so cool what kind of leaf is that that's a sycamore another sycamore wow that is awesome so obviously that's the that's the real heavy concentrated layer with a lot of leaves on it so up where we're digging up above is not nearly as concentrated correct okay. right and this is just this is really close to ty's layer it's maybe within six inches of it it's the same it's just about the same layer all right so you're talking about getting down to this layer yeah i mean we're you try to take out as big a blocks as you can because you're always going to be breaking things. You want to try to collect and save as much as you can and not destroy things that you don't have to. So I'm trying to clear this off. We're down the layer. I'm peeling up this last piece was this piece that peeled out around here. So we know we're at the good layer. So we decided to fill them a little bit as I peel this up. It's loose. It's ready to go, I think. We'll get it up, tip up. And I'm thinking that we're going to have to move it this way a little bit. See that corner's yep. peed in? And there's one leaf nice. right there, and there's another leaf right, another leaf right there. Ooh, right that's there. a nice one. Where'd that brush go? Uh, way back. Let's see what it looks like when we clean it off a little bit. That's a nice big. Oh, it's a nice, nice leaf. big leaf right there. See that right there. Now we will actually take and peel this down. Oh, there's actually another one right here. It's really, yeah, oh, it's that one that's there. That's one right there. So we'll set this one out of the way. You won't pick that, can you pick that up and move it? Oh. And we'll let that dry and split it down. So but there's still some pieces here that are loose. Let's see what happens when I do this. Nothing. <laughs> and that's the way it works. Well, this has been <laughs> an awesome day. A lot of work. It is a lot of work. And we found some good stuff. We found some so. good stuff. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it's dusty hard work. Yeah. We're just letting the last plates dry. As they dry, it's easier to split. Is that important? It is important because the leaves will want to split better when it's dry, when it's wet. It doesn't delaminate. Oh, okay. So it, you don't ruin as much and it's a lot easier and you find a lot more when you let it dry to yeah. separate so you take your time a little bit you know something i've noticed is is i mean just how when you get down to this layer the difference in the fossils the difference is a lot i mean yeah. we, we we took we took this down and the amount of fossils that we found while we found some they were fewer and far between but as soon as you hit this I mean, it was a whole other ball game. Well, and even even though they've been buried, these ones up here have been totally weathered. They're shot. You, you, even if you do find one, it's just falling apart yeah. already. It's already too far gone to save. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have some fossils. One thing I, I will mention to people is when you come out and do this stuff, don't be greedy. Yeah. I mean, 
I buy a lot of old collections in the States, and one thing I find from Rockhound is they have piles and piles of material that they will never use. It's really easy to come out here, and if you spent three or four days, you could load your truck with leaves. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do with a whole truckload of leaves? You can't sell them. No, and I, you know, I brought four or five groups out here like this of people to have fun and do this. And one of the things I do is I'll go through and I'll pick out one or two of the best leaves for myself, and the rest of these will actually end up going to school teachers. And it's that's a, awesome. And that's you know, but it's a good use for them. But if I was keeping all these, and I brought this group out, if I had no other way to get rid of them, I wouldn't even dig because. I'd have a house full in no time. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we found some great leaves here. Oh yeah. You know, there's a there's small a little, little, little teeny. I'm little, sure that's a type of a vine, but I can't remember the name of it. Little teeny vine leaf. A cute one. Ty's got a. This Ty's one got, got a little. Dust, this one got a little dusty. I'll clean it off gently. But that double leaf. A couple good ones here. One of the things. I did want to do is this last big plate that we've already looked at already. I'm trying to thin it down. It's pretty wet still because it's so thick, but I finally got to where it'll split. So we're just hoping to actually get one good leaf on camera here <laughs> and see what we can find. So let's hope that there's something in here. And there's uh, not much anything in here. No. Little teeny fragments, little pieces. There was one leaf there that didn't peel very good, but... But see, that's just the that's way just fossil it. hunting is. I mean, you're not gonna cut, it's not like you see on the Travel Channel where every time you no. come out, boom, there's we've done this, some awesome. We've done this 500 times today. Yeah. We're just in the good layer, was hoping it would be a good one. Yep. So. But there's still some great stuff. I mean, there's some cute little, little leaf fossils that I found. This is really cool how it's on this little pedestal right here. Now, why is that? How 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 become? See, you got a pedestal here. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Let's see and a pedestal here. here. So basically, what it is is because the leaf it wants to split on the leaf. So what it did is it dished down. It was splitting on this layer. This leaf was in a different layer, so it dished down to it and popped that leaf out. When the rocks dry correctly, it will do that. Um, huh. It's just the way it wants to separate from those leaves that's just not the grains are not grabbing together yeah and the freeze thaw action breaks it up that way well dude this has been a blast <laughs> man i mean seriously this has been awesome if people want to come out here you know and, and enjoy finding you know invertebrate fossils on public lands how, how can people figure out There's places like this a lot of different places people can find this you've got local rock clubs that's probably the easiest is find some people in your area that have been doing this there's a lot of old timers with a lot of knowledge you can go to the rock club you can meet some friends they go out on trips all over the place you can go to the uh, united states geological survey it has all sorts of books they've had geologists and paleontologists people out here digging this stuff forever since the 1800s and, since the 1800s, and they have all that information <laughs> on file one of the things that a lot of people have started doing and I, there's pros and cons to it is like in utah there's the utah google rock counting map you just type that in well your state tennessee rock counting google map and it'll bring up a map on google that people have been dropping pins of all these locations on that's awesome see you guys can get out and discover this kind of history all you have to do is get out of youtube and after you watch some other chase <laughs> history episodes of course and why well, and go out there and find this stuff it's so i mean it's really not hard no. and fossils are everywhere i mean ty's right every play every county every town every area community has got local rock rock cutting clubs i mean just do do a little bit of google research and find that out and you guys can come out to these awesome expanses of nothingness and find <laughs> some awesome stuff so yeah. this is great ty Bye. thank you hey thank you so much we appreciate you guys watching be sure to check out our other episodes on our youtube channel we also have a podcast if you guys like uh you know if, when you want to travel from one awesome place to another pull up chasing history radio available wherever there are podcasts we are chasing history this is the educational arm of the smoky mountain relic room you can go on to the relic room and see the awesome history that we have for sale at www.therelicroom.com yeah
What else we got? No I think Twitter. that's it. No, tw no Twitter. <laughs> follow us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. And we will never, ever, ever be on Twitter. You know why? Because like this stuff, Twitter is becoming extinct. See, it's already irrelevant. <laughs> History rocks. Woo! Dogs to dig fossils. <laughs>